the oh, house. Yes. Ghetto. The house can eat us. The house flickers again, and returns to its luxurious state. Huh. Something tells me this is a little bit higher than what you could dispel. <laughs> I think I figured that out, thanks. <laughs> just a series of minor illusions. Just turn it all off. You're in a field in the middle of Baldur's Gate. Uh, okay. What do you do? Uh, pees a little. <laughs> Can I inspect the area where he disappeared at? Uh, yes. Right. Uh, give me, uh, let's say, an investigation check. Sure. Or uh, Arcana, if you would rather. Let us see which is better. They well, are... I mean, well, for two different things. So if you oh. want to investigate it for, like, a trap or something, I'm going to ask for investigation. If you're uh, wanting to see if it was kind of magically open and what was involved yeah. there, yeah, Arcana. Absolutely uh, magic, I think. Okay. So I did, uh, I rolled a 15, or I got a 15. You pat the ground, say, that's 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 a pretty good trick. <laughs> I'm you impressed. Hear, can you do that? Oh, God. Is it the lion again? It is the lion. Oh, my gosh. The lion will narrate this entire room. Can I, Is there is there a uh, tablecloth? There's no light switch for the lion. Is there a tablecloth? Uh, yes, under quite a bit of stuff. I Can I take the tablecloth and gag the lion? The lion is about 15 feet in the air. Calista, you can fly. I don't think she can anymore. Nope. Oh! Do you carry that potion of flying with you? I, I still, I think we have it, yeah. But I don't want to waste it just to gag the lion, I guess. <laughs> oh. And, you know, ruin the Dungeon Master's plot device. And, and or release the chimera that's actually hidden in the wall. <laughs> with just the lion's head poking out. <laughs> he just has the one head sticking out. <laughs> I'm going to ask the... The, um... the other two heads are giggling. <laughs> The other guests, by the way, look fairly horrified. Yeah. Sarno is standing up, and he's kind of, like, canvassing the room, looking around, looking to you. He seems... Conf he's not scared, per se, but he looks worried. What were you going to say, Callista? Uh, well, my, answer, my question was already answered, so plan B. I'm going to, the, I'm going to head for the exit. That's a fair enough idea. Oh, come on. We, there's something to fight here. Is there? We could, we, could... we could find something's ass to kick and drink great ale. Uh, how about uh? we step outside, burn the place down, and then uh, go shift through the ashes for something well, to kill? Will you give me two minutes to go find a keg of that ale? Sure. Okay. Okay. I'm, there, I'm are, there are two exits from this room. The south side has the lion. The north end has an exit to the east and the west. You came from the west, past the trophy room and into the grand entry with the mosaic on the floor. To the east is where Molly disappeared into the kitchen. Okay. Can we I... should all go get the keg and then all head for the exit. Can I... That way we don't get split up. Can I talk to Oakheart first before... Yes. Before we, you know, leave where all the NPCs yeah, are, can, so they all can, die when we get back. <laughs> yeah, you can do whatever you want. All right. So I basically, I'll ask him like, "What's the game plan? What, what is, what's your, what's your thoughts, feelings, emotions?" Well, obviously, I have no idea what's happening. This is incredible magic, it seems. I mean, I mean, it's okay. <laughs> While you two chat, Thorland starts to eat everyone else's chicken. <laughs> Just grabbing pieces off people's plates. You're not, not going to eat that, are you? No. My main concern is for the safety of everyone here, uh, as well as Lefroit. But at the moment, we do not know where he is or if he is still alive. My priority He's not is eat to save everyone I can All right, here, and here. find a way then to solve this. I'll make you a, uh, an offer here. Like, If you want to stay here with these folks and kind of look after them, uh, we'll go. I'll go check on, see if I can find that halfling. Is the human server in here? Yeah, she's kind of standing in the corner. Oh, that's creepy. Uh, maybe I'll go talk to her next. Well, like, she, uh, she dies first. <laughs> <laughs> or she kills us first. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll tell him to kind of you know watch over everyone in this room, and I'll 
I want to go see if I can find the halfling, but Callista wants to go try the doors outside. Okay. Are, this is very important, are you doing those in sequence, or are you splitting the party? I de- definitely not split the party. <laughs> Last time that even happened for a moment, not even fully yeah. split the party, like st- died. <laughs> see, no, that's, that's against the... Uh, better judgment in D&D as well as any horror story, so we'd be breaking both rules at once. It'd be the perfect storm of party kill. Works every time in (laughs) Scooby-Doo. And I say that only because we need to have a reference to Scooby-Doo that I have to edit out of every single session. Okay. (laughs) So, Lex, or Callista, you want to go see if we can get outside? Front doors first. (laughs) You stay here. We're going to go find help. (laughs) All right, you run out of the room, past the trophy room again. You hear behind you, "Whoa, whoa! You're you're leaving already?" Oh, uh, shut up, lion! <laughs> we're you we're ent- gonna sweep the perimeter. You enter the grand uh, entry with the mosaic on the floor. Krug stands in the corner. He looks confused and unsure of what is happening. Aw, Frog, it's all right, man. You run to the door, grasp the handle, and pull. Nothing happens. It does not give at all. Frog, Frog, open the door. Get. (laughs) Yeah, I think I could have told you that, Callista, but (laughs) I wanted you to find out for yourself. You should let Hog open the door. He's big. Sure. Krug, Krug is confused by what you want. He says, is party over? You leave already? Your master will not like his guests leaving early. No, Krug, open door. A uh, gift for master outside. Must retrieve it. He looks at you, slightly confused, because he's not as dumb as most half-ogres, so doesn't need to be, you know, catered to. But he walks over to the door puts both hands on the handles, and pulls back, and you don't hear so much as a creak. All right. All right. Yeah, told you. Let's Here, go find it and kill it. Yeah, here's the issue, Hrug. Your master just got um, taken. So Take, Taken? Taken by whom? I, what has happened? I don't know. That's what we need. Your help. He pushes past you. No. A little bit more roughly than would be, you know, polite, but he is huge. And he runs, shaking Ow. the floor with his footfalls. Uh, and you see that his shoes are just coverings over his massive feet. Damn it. We... And he runs Whatever. into the the um, dining room, and you hear him cry out, Master! Where is Master? Oh, gosh. And the lion goes, <laughs> uh, He's downstairs. <laughs> Okay, well that that backfired. Uh, <laughs> should we go calm the half ogre, or do you guys want to go find the halfling? Uh, I think we, we should just wander ogre. around until we find the thing we're supposed to kill. Okay, so from where you are, there is you are standing in the middle of the mosaic on the floor. So you okay. have the doors to the north that okay. lead to the outside. You have the hallway to the south that leads to the trophy room and the dining room. There is a small door to the east where your coats were placed. There is a small door beyond, in the lower east corner, um, and your general guess would be that the door close, the little room closest to the door is probably for coats and servants uh, to pass through. This other door is probably more of a direct line to the kitchen. Um, I forgot to ask, Is was Father Malik in the other room with, this, with everyone else? or All all the guests are in the other room. Okay, they all seem equally confused. Well, I mean, unless you want to take some insight checks and whatnot, everyone seemed at first to be you know pretty equally yeah. confused. Uh, you hear a little bit of talking and loud voices in the other room. Uh, you realize that um, Helena Talbert is yelling at the others that something must be done. She must, uh, we must get out of here. Before we are all also killed. Um, and you hear Sarnal's voice cut through and say, we must be careful at every step. Okay. 
Should What's we? You? I kind of want to check the the coat room first. Okay. If we could. So you enter the servants' pass. Um. This is a fairly plain room with coats and cloaks on hooks. A small closet space holds cleaning supplies. Mm. Uh, there is um, a cabinet with you know closed little doors, like a like a little uh, like kitchen cabinets or like bathroom cabinets, um, uh, under a small uh, table, and then of course the cloaks in the in the in the corner. Okay. Can I uh, inspect the cloaks specifically? Yes. Okay. Give me a... Uh, let us make a perception check. Oh, man, it's loud. Uh, 17? Okay. You see that there are um, more cloaks than there are guests. Ooh. Uh, there are also um, two fairly plain co- cloaks that you imagine are probably uh, for servants. One very large tarp-like cloak that you imagine is shrugs. <laughs> um, there, uh, let's see, there are what five guests? One, two, three, four, five, fourteen cloaks. Hmm. So, our three shrugs, Molly, human lady, and then the other five. 11, so that leaves three more. You would imagine that perhaps Lef- Lefroit has more than one cloak. Yeah. Can I check any of the nicer looking ones? Is there any that stand out? Um, yeah, there are a few. There's one that looks very nicely embroidered. Two that match. One uh, with kind of a bluish sheen and a slight border. Um, and that's kind of it. The rest are... Uh, I'll check out the really, really nice one. With all the... the the blue sheen one? Oh, there was another one you said that was all like... Im- like. Oh, yes. Sorry. Um, yeah, you uh, check it. It doesn't seem to be magical or anything. It just seems to be nice. Um, it has a slight smell of uh, perfume, and oh. uh, you are pretty sure it is Helena's. Okay. Is... No, are these just regular cloaks, or do any of them have pockets? Uh, they are. These are just over cloaks. Okay. Well, if I can do an Arcana check to see if any are magical, then out of that, I'm just I'm just gonna walk away after that. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, that's a twenty. Natural. Yeah. Yeah. You uh, your perception check wasn't quite enough to notice at first, but you do sense magic coming off of the blue sheen cloak. Ooh. I'll... I'll just uh, snag Wait, that. Thing. You said it was a natural twenty. Yeah, that was a, that was a natural twenty. So a crit. Yeah. Um. It is, you believe, a cloak of protection, oh, and it oh, oh. does not seem to be attuned. Attuned to a person, you mean? Yeah. Okay. Um. I feel like. Hmm. I'm definitely taking it. What do you guys think? Who should who should be wearing this thing? I don't even know what it does. It's uh, probably more a Callista item than anyone else would be my guess. Yeah. It's plus one AC and plus one to saving throws. Mm. Or we can make the dwarf but more But it requires tanky. attunement. Oh, so it goes forever with them, whoever takes <laughs> Well, I mean, you can unattune, but it, it's one of your three attunements. Um, I, I feel like we should probably ask the guy if we can <laughs> use his cloak. <laughs> <laughs> Lafroit? Le- oh, it's Lafroit's. Well, I mean, you know, who do, who do you think it is? I mean, like, I thought it you... might have been uh, one of the, oh, the nobles. Wizard? The nobles. Oh, maybe. Um, uh, oh well, uh, too late. <laughs> we need this shit now. Um, you did notice that the the wizard is wearing his own. Cl- he is wearing a cloak. Yeah. I didn't even. I don't even know who the wizard is. So, what's your, your AC is eighteen right now, Thorland? With my shield, yep. Yeah, so we either put you at 19, me at 18, or Callista at what? 14? Uh, 13? 13. It's not worth it to give it to me. <laughs> it's not worth it not to, really. I mean, <laughs> honestly, it's... It, it'd be fine for anyone. It's... I would say because you can't wear armor, it's probably better for you. But that's that's just me. Yeah. 
I don't I don't really care whoever wants it. Are you going to put it on and attune it now, or are you just going to put it in your bag and carry it around? <laughs> what do you guys think? I need I need input. Just put it in I'll take bag. it if you don't want it. All right, let's make the dwarf more tanky. All right. Plus um, one AC cloak of dwarven sexy. And you have to attune to it. So uh, you can't get any of its benefits until you sit with it for an hour How? during short rest. Okay, so it does nothing so while I'm sitting so, and drinking beer. Yeah, maybe if we go back and talk to the people and maybe find the halfling while we're looking around. Okay, there is the door you came through and a door to the south out of this room. Mm. As well as, you know, the, the, there's also the cabinets in the room and whatnot. All right. So, seeing as Thorland's admiring his new cloak, uh, Kanto will turn to Callista and say, should we go back and... and and grill all the um, guests to see if anyone knows something. I mean, I can I can sweeten up some of them, and you can intimidate some of the others, like the old lady maybe, or the mean lady. Well, would we benefit from that? Well, maybe someone knows something that they aren't saying. I doubt it. The guests. <laughs> You're always so negative. <laughs> <laughs> Someone has to be. <laughs> well, we do have a father who may know something about this kind of crap, and then we had that old-looking wizard. Maybe he knows something. Yeah, I, I think I did forget to introduce the wizard during yeah. the discussion. It's probably the wizard we have to go to. All right, let's go talk he to seems the. Like some... Yeah, let's go talk to the wizard. And if he doesn't have anything, we'll talk to the father. Are you going back the way you came? Or uh, the new door? Yeah, I think. Because <laughs> it's quote unquote cleared, let's go back through the way we came. All right. Um, you go back through the entry, uh, past the trophy room, and into the dining room. Uh, the lion looks at you. Ah, welcome back. Okay. Ooh, looking spiffy, dwarf. <laughs> Middle finger. <laughs> Krug looks down at you and says, "That cloak." And he just kind of trails off. Um, as Helena <laughs> yells out, um, So? Why have you left us here? What? What is going on? I demand answers from you. Kanto looks at Callista and gives, him, gives her the, the, the nod. <laughs> Alright. Uh, I will strap my hands. What? <laughs> Not that nod. <laughs> Not that nod. No, no, sorry. I, I meant the other nod. <laughs> That's my bad. I do not understand what that nod is about. <laughs> Just <laughs> torture. <laughs> oh. Just following orders. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh... <laughs> Maybe I'll step in front of her and be like, gosh dang it, Calista, we really need to work on our hand signals. <laughs> Communication. <laughs> Communication. It's terrible in this group. Uh, I'll just try to smooth things over and say, we got this, calm down. Like, we're, we're taking a look, we're uh, scoping out the area, everything seems fine, we'll get you out of here in we no time. We locked the door, so whatever it is can't get out. <laughs> gosh dang it, dwarf. <laughs> Can I make a charisma <laughs> check to calm her down? You can try. Uh, 16 plus, uh, 9, so 25. Um, she looks at you and she says, what have you discovered? It looks, uh... <laughs> well, hey, you're a bitch. <laughs> the dwarf is drunk already, apparently. <laughs> um, he'll say, you know what? Don't worry about it. Just be happy here. Eat your food. We'll, have, we'll, take, we'll take care of everything. We'll get you out of here in no time. You're fine. You're safe. And then he'll quickly walk away from her and try to uh, catch the wizard's attention. Okay. Uh, the wizard looks at you, his big, bushy eyebrows uh, flaring as he looks at you. <laughs> flaring. Um, Can I get he his... He was introduced as Tandar the Globe Cloak. The Globe and Cloak? Globe Cloak. Okay. And uh, when he his name was said, um, Mordecai Hamlin looked at him and said, "I believe my father used to tell stories of of your adventures." 
Oh. And actually, if you would like to make a history check. Absolutely. Dice fell off the table. Uh, 16. All right. Um, you actually remember back when your mentor, Belmore Armamek? Yep. Uh, the dwarf who taught you how to play and sing and taught you various stories told you in your youth stories of Tandar the Globe Cloak. Ooh. Am I starstruck? He is a human wizard extraordinaire. He's an old wizard with bushy eyebrows, curled mustache, and a fork beard. So what you're telling me is he's a high-level wizard and we can just uh, ch sit back and let him do it. <laughs> This is one of those Unless times when you can just be is. like, "What?" He's like, "He's like, I took care of it while you were in the other room." <laughs> yeah, that client's my familiar. This this is all fine. Don't worry. No, we're good. Uh, no. He uh, he looks at you and he says, "Um, <laughs> um no, can I close this Uh What have you? Uh, I don't speak hmm. wizard. What are you saying? What's uh? Are uh there?" Devious traps or fiends or oh gosh. what? What? He's gotten a little senile in his old age, hasn't he? He's he seems he seems a little unsure of what's <laughs> happening. Oh god! He does not have the commanding like. <laughs> now we got to deal with a senior citizen wizard too. presence of. <laughs> Are there tacos? Super wizard that you mentioned. He doesn't. He doesn't come off as senile. He doesn't. Uh, but he's um. It's cold outside, he, he, and there are wolves after me. He doesn't seem to just present this air of, uh, I got a spell, we're good. You know what okay. I mean? I keep forgot to, to fill a spell slot before he came over. <laughs> he, he didn't prepare spells. <laughs> no, but just more like... Um, All I did was friends. He's not <laughs> stepping up to, uh, necess or at least as of yet, to um, solve the problem. I prefer prepared 16 slots of fairy fire. Um... Okay, uh, so I guess I'll just ask him what his thoughts are. Like, like, is this any of this sending your ancient magic feelings tingling, or? No, 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 no yeah. <laughs> uh, I b I believe that's your classic. Um, let's see, that'd be your floor to soup spell. What? Uh, uh, you know where you turn your 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 stone into into quickstand and you know, drops in. In like a like a like a bone and stew. Uh, yeah. Dude, are you it's, even uh... trying? <laughs> He's a, uh... the, the, the sorceress knows what I'm talking about. Okay. Um, as for this lion, that's that's just incredible. Uh, I'm guessing dwarvic technology. His eyebrows go up really large, and he looks down at Thorlin. <laughs> huh? Dwarven Thorlin technology? just looks at him with a blank stare and says, "Yep." Probably. <laughs> oh, crafty gnomes helping out, making things with dwarves. Can't, Very can't, good. Kanto slowly backs away. It's 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 been an honor. <laughs> uh, but that does lead me. The the human servant. Can I ask her if there's a basement? Or something under this. She, kind of has a weirdly blank stare on her face, oh. or like look not stare but like look on her face like. Almost like the fear has driven her, not quite catatonic, but like, bleh. um. Does that mean it's an auto crit if I want to cut off her head? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, the, <laughs> she kind of, after a moment, looks at you and she says, yes, there's a cellar for wine. I, I don't but, like that voice. <laughs> Take us there, Stepford Waitress. <laughs> but what? It's just a tiny room. Perfect. There's nothing there. I don't believe that for a second. Except wine. Uh, Sounds good. Kanto will smile like a little too wide and head back over to Oakheart and be like, I think you need to take it out. keep an eye on that one. <laughs> she does seem strange. Yeah... Okay. She seems almost confused, as if she, like after someone has hit their head. Hmm. 
I've seen it with, you know, guards when they're groggy after being attacked or, you know, victims of an attack. Or uh, poor barmaids after they've been demonically possessed. I say we've got to head off and be done with it. <laughs> that hasn't happened here in a long time. <laughs> oh, at least not no, on this but it has happened. <laughs> It's or never winter. Father, you know what I'm talking happen. about. We behead her now, right? Save in Patro Pelor. What? <laughs> oh, sorry. He, he's like, I, I can't do anything without another young priest of Pelor. I, like, I, I got nothing, guys. Oh, okay. Well. Power Pelor compels you. <laughs> Spraying water on. Okay, so he, he looks at you and he says, um, this Pelor, is Father damn it. What? Pelor, damn it. Uh, Father Malik um, <laughs> looks at you and... He, he he looks over his spectacles and uh, kind of pushes them up and says, "I am not a battle cleric. I know some rites of healing and excuse me, minor magics, but I am not." Well, I'll cut the head off. I'm just asking you to agree. Wait, what are we doing? <laughs>